All right, guys, I'm back. Um, <clears throat> today, we're going to talk about combining like radicals, which really is taking a bunch of things that we already know how to do and putting them together in a different way. Um, it's not necessarily going to be anything more difficult or more complex than what we've done. It's just going to be a different way of looking at it. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's think to some basic algebra. And I know the top of this is getting cut off a little bit, but hopefully you can still read it. Um, can we simplify the expression 2x plus 7x? And the answer would be yes, we can. And the reason that we can is these are both x's. So we can combine them together and get 9x. Similarly, however, can I simplify 2x plus 7y? And we all know that the answer is no, because they are not like terms. They have to be like terms in order for us to be able to count up how many of these things that we have. If I have two apples and eight apples, I have ten apples. But if I have two apples and eight oranges, I still have two apples and eight oranges. I can't put them together and call them one thing. Um, this idea of like terms is very much what we're going to be doing as we think about like radicals today. They have to be matching terms. Here is a bit of vocabulary, and I forgot to put the little notebook icons on these notes today, but this is one that you need to have. So there it is, okay? Make sure this is in your notes. Like radicals. Like radicals are radicals that have both the same index and the same radicand, okay? You have to be taking the same kind of root of the same thing. So here's a couple of examples. The cube root of 4 and the cube root of 4. These are like radicals. These are not. The cube root of 4 and the cube root of 6. These have the same index but not the same radicand. So they are not like radicals. Okay. The 4th root of 7 and the 4th root of 7, those are, those are good. The 4th root of 7 and the 5th root of 7. Here the radicand is the same, but the index is not. So these are the ones that don't work as far as being like radicals. Give you a second to get that in your notes. What we're going to do is use this idea of like radicals <clears throat> to simplify the expressions that I have here. If we look at the first one, the two radicals that I have, I have the fourth root of 5 and the fourth root of 5. This is apples and apples. So if I have three of them here and two of them here, how many of them do I have all together? Well, the answer is going to look like very similar to if the question were 3x plus 2x. The answer would be 5x because I'm counting x's. So the answer here is going to be 5 fourth roots of 5. And that's the answer, guys. That's all you have to do here. Okay? <clears throat> On number 2... You'll notice that we actually have two different types of radicals, and this is where sometimes you got to slow down and really pay attention. I have square roots of 6, but I also have a cube root of 6 in here. Can I put together a cube root with a square root? We can't. <clears throat> so that means that even though I simplify this, I'm going to have two terms in my answer. Just note, remember, this would be negative 1 root 6, since there's nothing written there. Just like if it said minus x, 
That's minus 1x. So if I put together the terms that match, I have negative 7 and negative 1 gives me negative 8 square roots of 6 plus this one, which has nothing to match it up with, so that's all I can do. And this would be the end. Even though these are both 6s, why are they not like radicals? Their index is not the same. Okay? All right, let's move on here. Sometimes we're going to have to do a little bit more work before we have like radicals. This is why it's really important that you know how to simplify the radicals. If you simplify them, we're hoping that what's going to happen is that when I get it simplified, I'm going to end up with like radicals. Okay? Having to simplify it before you can combine your like radicals, that's what's going to take it from a level 2 to a level 3. Okay, this is a little bit higher level process. So if I look at this, 12 fourth roots of 2, I can't simplify this at all. But over here, the fourth root of 512, I can simplify that. 256 goes into 512. You'll notice here we ended up with a fourth root of 2. That's a good sign that we're on the right track because that's what we're trying to match here. So using your charts, what's the fourth root of 256? It's 4. So I have 4 fourth roots of 2. And then remember, I've got to multiply by this 7 here. So what we've ended up with now is 12 fourth roots of 2 minus 7 times 4, which is 28 fourth roots of 2. And ta-da, now you can see what we've got. We have like radicals. So now I can do 12 minus 28, which is negative 16, fourth roots of 2. And this is the answer. This one was nice because we only had to simplify one. The first one was already pretty much as simplified as you were going to get. Number four, unfortunately, we're going to have to simplify both. So I'm going to start here with the cube root of 48. And I look at my chart and try to figure out what goes into 48, and it's 8. So I have the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 6. 6 times 8 is 48. I'm going to have two cube roots of 6 that I then have to multiply by this 5 here which gives me 10 cube root 6. That's what we get for the left. For the right, the cube root of 750, we go back to our chart. This is going to be the cube root of 125 times, luckily, the cube root of 6. The cube root of 125 is 5, and I have the cube root of 6 left over. Again, I now have like radicals, so I'm okay. I can put those together. I get 15 cube roots of 6. And that's, like I said, that's what takes it from a level 2 to a level 3. But again, a level 3 is what everybody is supposed to be at by the end of the unit. Level 3 doesn't mean that it's harder, you know, that only some people should be able to do the level threes. Everybody is supposed to be at a three. That's proficient. That means I've learned exactly what I was supposed to. So don't skip the level threes just because they're a little bit tougher. You need to learn those. The last little bit, and this is the, I think this is the last slide. Yes, it is is if we throw in the variables, which as we've seen the last couple of days, sometimes can even make it easier. So you'll notice here I already have a fifth root of x and a fifth root of x. Are those like radicals? Yes. So I'm just going to add them together. 12 fifth roots of x. Done and done. That is our answer. 
this is one where I'm going to have to do a little bit of simplifying first. So first thing we need to decide is what's the index of our radical. These are square roots, so even though it's not written there, the index is 2. I've got this x that I'm going to multiply by whatever I get. The square root of 9 is 3. And then 2 goes into 3 once, but I still have one left over, so it's going to be inside the radical there. Now don't forget that I now have to multiply these. So x times 3x is 3x squared, square root of x. Then I'm going to go over here. I've got this negative 2 times 2 goes into 5 twice, which is an x squared, with 1 left over. Negative 2 times x squared would be minus 2x squared root x. Now you'll notice there's really two things here that I have to watch out for when I add in the variables. One is I have to have like radicals, which I have, the square root of x and the square root of x. But the other is that we have to have like terms. If these weren't both x squareds, I could not add them together. But luckily they are. 3x squared minus 2x squared is just x squared times the square root of x. And that's the solution. Okay? Um, tonight's assignment is a little bit longer than the ones in the past um, because there's a lot of different types. We've got the level 2 basic ones, the level 3 that are a little bit tougher, and then we have the ones that have the variables. So um, since the notes were so short today, you do have a fairly lengthy assignment that you need to complete since you're going to have so much time to be practicing in class. Uh, make sure that you guys are working together because if you have questions, the best thing you can do is try and talk this through with someone else. And that's it for our sub days. I will be back here with you guys tomorrow and we'll kind of review everything from the last two days and go over everything that we've done with radicals up to this point. Okay? I'll see you guys soon.